Welcome to Spotlight on the Arts. Today is August 30th, 2017. I'm your host, Rick J, along with co-host Kathleen Cat Dake, as we call her, Cat. Both Cat and I are honored uh, today with a special guest, Linda Bratteen. Linda is well known for her quilt arts, in which she incorporates a variety of mixed media techniques and free motion quilting on a standard or a domestic sewing machine. She's from rural Missouri. Welcome, uh, Linda. Well, thanks for having me, Rick and Kat. I'm so glad to have you as our guest today. This is really interesting to find out how you do your process of quilting. Yeah. Super, yes. Please tell us a little bit about you and those highlights of your life that best describe Linda Bratteen. Well, I was raised in rural Nebraska, and I attended the University of Nebraska at Kearney, where I got my um, vocational home economics teaching degree. And that's incidentally where I met my college sweetheart, and we've been married 31 years. And we have three um, fine young men who gave us three wonderful daughters-in-laws and um, two beautiful grandchildren, Braden and Brindley. And you have a name for those people? You'd like I to do. do a shout out, please, to sure. those. We welcome them also. Thank you. Um, hello to Brett, Blake, Crystal, Braden, Brinley, Jacob, um, Brooke, Nathan, and Jessica. I love you and thanks for all your support. Great, great. It's nice to be from a big family. Uh, Linda, could you share with us uh, your beginnings as an artist and then tell us what inspires your artistic interests? Well, I've never really had any formal training per se in art, but I grew up with a creative family. My grandma let me sew on her treadle sewing machine and my mother um, always did really creative things with little, little bits of money. And um, I had a really good instruction in high school. I had a great um, arts teacher, Mr. Steve Warren. I'd like to give a shout out to him. And also a family consumer science teacher who inspired me in a lot of ways, Judy Davis. And um, that's allowed me then to develop the, the creative side of my life. And um, this has led me to teach in a variety of sewing and quilting venues. Locally, I've been teaching in the Columbia area since 2008. Oh, I've even taught at um, national events like the Machine Quilter Showcase and uh, MQX uh, Midwest. So on the national level, I was able to teach. I am an online instructor with Craftsy, which um, puts me as one of 800 instructors internationally that teaches arts and crafts online, and so I'm always available um, to, to see me there. I am an award-winning quilter and awesome. um, have had some of my work published in magazines, most recently in the April-May Quilting Arts magazine. I have a, a piece in there. and. Uh, some recognition back in my history. In December of 2015, I had um, a peacock shawl that I created in which I digitized the embroidery designs and free motion um, thread painted the, the peacock, was one of five semi-finalists for the Threads Magazine Bernina Machine Embroidery Challenge, um, which was held. So that was kind of an honor. Um, yes, I I currently have a piece that's in the Traveling Trunk Show for Sakwa, the Studio um, Art Quilt Associates, uh, Associates and um, I create workbooks, patterns, and machine embroidery designs to enhance the classes I teach. Excellent. I, I must add that I did meet uh, Linda recently at a quilt show at Rooster Creek uh, Fabric and Sewing Center in uh, Holt Summit, Missouri, and I was so impressed by the artistic outlay, the artistic design, the uh, just everything that you put together. When I'm running the brush on a canvas, she does the same thing with the different techniques that she's developed and learned. And so I was so impressed with her quilt. Uh, she named the uh, stork, I guess it was. 
a peacock. The peacock, yes, yes, the peacock. It's beautiful. I think you'll see a shot as we speak. You'll see a shot of some of those uh, items. Also, another piece was called My Fantasy Garden by uh, Miss Linda. And uh, so you'll be really um, tickled, I think, just to watch the program. So stay with us. Well, then, let's go ahead. Can you share with us your favorite mediums? That's different, I know, in quilt making, what have you. And subject matter, naturally. I know we have a variety, uh, quite a, a wide variety of subject matter when working on a project uh, such as a quilt uh, uh, or doing one of your instructional presentations that you're known for. Well, um, of course, I love fabrics, all kinds and shapes. Um, but I'm really known for my machine um, quilting, and that's a free motion technique. But I love to uh, incorporate with that free motion technique a variety of mixed media. I use oil um, paint sticks. I use acrylic fabric paints, glitter, um, even photo transfer in my quilts. Anything's game as far as I'm concerned, and if it sparkles, it's all the better. <laughs> Great. Now, can you explain to the viewers what a free motion is? Free motion quilting is when you would lower the feed dogs to your sewing machine and you have a free motion quilting foot, but then you move the fabric around to create a design so the thread actually stitches out a, a pattern or a design. And I love to teach that technique using what I call training wheels um, so that people get the basic shape using things that they're familiar with. Yes. Uh, and glitter, I, I know we uh, all can identify with glitter. We have Jimmy Mustian, one of our co-hosts recently, and uh, with the Jefferson City Art Club, we call him the Glitter Man. Uh, Jimmy took a third place uh, um, in the State Fair just recently in, here in Missouri. So Glitter Man, we'll say hi to you, who's in the hospital today uh, with pneumonia trying to recover. Uh, so uh, shout out to Jimmy Mustian. That sounds great. <laughs> Well, Linda, I've been to your website and I've seen some of your terrific projects. And I was wondering if there's a place where we could go to see some of your quilting artwork or your upcoming venues or anything like that that you are getting ready to do. Well, I'm glad you went to my website. In fact, that's the, the best place to locate me at. Um, it's Linda Bratteen, my last name, B-R-A-T-T-E-N, creations.com. And on there, you'll find a link um, to all my social media sites and also to my newsletter. I create a monthly newsletter that's free, and it posts where I'm going to be teaching next. But you can always take my Craftsy class online. Um, in addition, my husband allows me to show my, my quilts at his business, which is located in Columbia. It's Columbia Discount Furniture and Bedding. Oh, so I always have an ongoing show there. <laughs> ah, excellent, excellent. That's great. Now your piece that's called uh, Peacock Passion, it's really beautiful and it uh, has bright colors and really lovely patterns. And it's uh, painted on silk, hand painted, and then machine quilted and then embellished also. Could you talk a little bit about that? Well, my Peacock Passion actually started out as a hardware challenge in a local sewing studio where we had to incorporate three things from a hardware store. And um, I had this plan to make this wonderful quilt and then incorporate these three things. Now, I'll tell you right off the front, when you look at it, the paint is not from the hardware store. It is textile paints. But um, that was actually the first item that I free motion quilted back in 2008. Um, with a machine, so it was, it was kind of fun. It's, um, it's kind of intriguing, and when I have it on, on shows or in, in vendor booths, it's kind of interesting to see the gentleman walk up and say, well, if it comes from a hardware store, I should be able to pick this out, and um, usually I can stump them pretty good. Did you, uh, you follow up, Kat, with Linda on that question? Um, well, the, uh, the actual designs, how do you create those? Is it uh, with a computer on your machine? Or do you make them up in your head and draw them? Actually, um, they're all free, freehand drawn first, um, even, even like the peacock and, and different things. But when I'm teaching my, my free motion quilting designs, they are all um, hand drawn. And I always tell people to practice in your sketchbook first. And then whatever you develop, that muscle memory, you're able to um, replicate it back on the cloth. So I teach a low mark to no mark method of machine quilting. Now, with the exception of the machine embroidery designs, those are actually stitched out by the machine. But everything else that you see in my work is all done um, with minimal marking and done by me moving the fabric under the needle. Hmm. And what kind of uh, sewing machines do you prefer? 
I love a lot of them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I've ever really, really met a machine I didn't like. Oh. Um, but, you know, I, I look for something that's going to be durable and um, easily lower those feed dogs because you don't want to snag your, your fabric on the back right. side. But um, as long as you can lower your feed dogs and put a free motion quilting foot on, I'm, you can pretty much machine quilt with any machine that you have. I, see. I do remember sewing on my grandmother's uh, treadle machine the yeah. old singer, and I learned how to make Barbie doll clothes on that. Oh. So what were some of your first creations? I'm pretty sure it was doll clothes. Um, the one I remember my grandma uh, was a pillow, just a very basic pillow that she had me work, and she did the treadling, and I just guided it along. Uh, other than that, I remember my first home economics sewing project with Mrs. Davis, and she always laughed because I tried it on, and it was this wonderful oh, blouse. Uh -huh. And uh, she thought it was amazing that I couldn't, I did more trying on, I think, than I did actual sewing in the classroom. So stayed late to finish it. A lot of fabric and a love for mach uh, sewing machines. That's a typical uh, quilt artist or quilter, in, in fact, being around a lot of the quilters in my sharpening service. Uh, I, I ran into so many talented ladies and some men that are in town. In fact, I did run a a, t a treadle machine when I was young, you know, just to learn, I guess, in case I had a hole in a pair of pants or something when I got older. They all seemed like they wanted to prepare you for that. Well, Linda and Kat, we must take a break at this time. After the break, we again join Linda Bratine, who will introduce us, to introduce us to a new technique a painting called Free Motion Quilting, which she's talked a little bit about, but she will be more in depth with that. And that'll embellish her pieces uh, naturally and can also serve as an artist type quilt. So that all happens when we return in 60 seconds. Stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. I'm Rick Jay, your host, along with my co-host for this Spotlight on the Arts, Catherine, or Kathleen, beg your pardon, Dake. We call her Kat for short. Kat, I know uh, you'd like to personally welcome back Miss Linda Bratine. Yes, Linda, welcome back, and uh, I'm so glad that you're here to talk about your fiber arts and your quilting uh, designs. Also, uh, I know you uh, like to do free motion quilting, mm -hmm. and a lot of people may not really understand what that means. And also, you like to create nature-inspired shapes and, and uh, patterns, and that you also teach this at different workshops and online. Can you talk about that? Sure. Um, free motion quilting is when you lower the feed dogs on your sewing machine, and I use just a home or domestic sewing machine and you actually are sewing with, you are moving the fabric. The machine is not pulling the fabric through, you're moving it and doing different oh. shapes. And um, one of the pieces that I developed for my online class, which is um, natural machine quilting motifs with Craftsy, is called my fantasy garden. And to complete this piece, I took a, a batik fabric that had a multitude of gorgeous colors in it, and I just started basically doodling with my sewing machine and stitching out different organic shapes, flowers and leaves. 
And then I came back once I was finished uh, quilting it and enhanced those motifs We're using textile paints. And uh, the neat thing about this is that um, you can do free motion quilting on anything. It doesn't have to necessarily be a quilt. It could be a bag. You oh, could do I clothing. Um, I even, in my craftsy class, show them some of the nature-inspired motifs, like vegetables from the garden, and put them on um, kitchen towels. And I show, oh, I show, cover that technique. So it's it's basically um, it's just a technique that embellishes the fabric. And I kind of let the batik talk to me when I do this. Um, but I do use the free motion quilting motifs in a variety of my quilts, including my um, photo transferred ones. It sounds like a wonderful and relaxing creative outlet. Yeah, it's like coloring with threads. It's really fun. Now, now that to me, it sounds somewhat in intimidating. Uh, can you encourage your viewers? Uh, what would you want to say to them to encourage them to try this free motion? Okay. Basically, it's the machine running, and you're, you've got the pat fabric, I guess, and moving around in a circle or following a pattern. It'll, a flower, outside flower, inside, yeah. what have you. That's exactly right. That's exactly what we do. But when I teach, I always call it a workshop. Because oh, when excellent. I teach this, I, I like to um, demonstrate on a whiteboard what techniques we're going to be covering. And I, and I use my what I call training wheels, um, motifs that we're familiar with. For example, I have one class that we focus on E's and L's in the cursive um, penmanship. And we use those shapes and motifs to make leaves, to make petals, to make uh, swirls and different designs. And so I use what the student is familiar with, and then we, we get them right on their own machine and sewing these motifs out. So it's a hands-on workshop. So when the student leaves, they are actually feeling um, a lot more comfortable with free motion quilting. But not only that, they have a, a, a little repertoire of design motifs that they might be encouraged to try, at least on some other smaller projects before taking it um, to a larger project. So it's really important to uh, sign up for a class. I see that uh, uh, Kathleen, Kat, has already uh, talked about signing up to, uh, to learn this technique. So that's, that's great. Now, do you have any um, in these venues that you're going to be at, you'd like to, for or people might have just tuned in, where you might be uh, teaching a class or where they can come and just drop in and uh, see your work or some venue that you're uh, maybe competing in with your uh, quilts. Okay, uh, designs. yeah, there's, there's several ways you, you can um, take a class from me. One of them is my online venue. And for those of you that are not familiar with Craftsy, uh, once you purchase the class, you can watch it at your leisure. So I always encourage people to watch a segment and then go to your sewing machine, do a little practice, oh, and then I come see. back. Yes. Also, um, with that platform, you can email me questions, and oh, I respond back. Super. So mm. it's 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 really great for rural areas because then they get quali quality teaching, at, um, and they don't have to travel into town. You can actually take the class in your PJs, and no one will ever know. Yes, um, uh -huh. Here locally, I have been um, teaching a block of the month at the Rooster Creek Creek um, quilt shop here in Holt Summit, and that meets the first Saturday of the month at 10, from 10 to 12, and we cover, right now we're doing Dancing with the Dresden Plate. It's a very traditional block, um, but I do it all by machine, and I demonstrate how to do it all by machine. Um, I always joke in class that hand is a four-letter word, and so we're not going to cover that. We're just going to go ahead and do it all by machine. Um, so that's a local one. But the best way to keep up with where I'm teaching and where I'm going to be presenting is to subscribe to my newsletter. In there, I always say, this is where I'm going to be next, and I hope to meet you. Excellent. Now, do they have to call and register at Rooster Creek and Holt Summit, the fabric and uh, sewing uh, center? Do they have to call to register for that? Yes, it would be okay. best to, to call and... and, and well, Mike Kuno, I believe his name is. Right, right, mm -hmm. to, with, or Mike or Teresa, either or one, Teresa. to um, mm -hmm. reserve your spot because seating is limited and we want to make sure that everyone has the adequate amount of space to, to be creative with. Sometimes when you're creative, it is messy. I see Kat's uh, excited in her chair, raising her hand. Can I talk? Oh, go ahead. Do you <laughs> surely have something. Uh, well, you've got wonderful pictures on your website. And so I hope everyone takes the time to, to go there to visit. And uh, then you said you had links to every one of your venues and even your shows. Mm -hmm. And there's wonderful pictures there with lots of nice color of all the different types of quilt. And one of my uh, 
favorites that I saw was your inspirational journals. Now, can you talk about those and how you started making them? Well, okay. That was actually a class I taught to introduce people to basic um, quilting piecing and uh, to use their decorative stitches on their sewing machine. And then we, find, we finish it off with doing some free motion embroidery, or if you're not comfortable with that, there are actually embroidery designs that you can stitch out by machine. So if you don't feel comfortable doing the free motion. So I kind of combined a variety of techniques into one project, and I do sell that as a pattern. But um, if, you're, if you're really curious about how I teach, you need to check out my Facebook group, Linda Be Creative, that goes along with my newsletter. And in there I do a lot of Facebook Live where I actually do um, classes. We did a serger um, ladybug pot holder. We just finished a quilt label presentation. So there's a variety of venues that I teach at, um, even if you can't make it to Holt Summit or any of my other locations. Okay, that sounds right. very interesting. Now, uh, next we generally ask at this time to give uh, our viewers your telephone number, email, blog, website, and Facebook information, which you did, but it doesn't hurt to repeat it uh, in case uh, they don't have a pencil and pen. So grab your pencil and pen. Give us that information you'd like us to share with okay. the, our viewers, website, telephone, blog, Facebook, etc. Well, the best way to, to contact me is to go to, my, to my, my website. And on there, I have a link that you can contact me via email and also um, all of my social media sites. And that's at www.linda-bratteen, B-R-A-T-T-E-N, creations, C-R-E-A-T-I-O-N-S, um, dot com. And that's the best way to find me and to keep track of me. Excellent, and that's all connected, so that would mm -hmm. be that would be excellent. All right, uh, did you have anything else, uh, Kat, to uh, bring to Linda? The, uh, the types of paint that you use, they're fabric paints, mm -hmm. and then you talked about some of the thread. Can you elaborate a little bit about this, the types of thread that you use to embellish your work? Okay, um, if I can make a recommendation. Uh, always invest in quality thread. You will never regret it. Um, the things you get for like two for a dollar, if it looks fuzzy, you wanna avoid that because that'll just give you Ugh. issues with your machine later. Um, but I love all kinds of threads. Um, I love polyesters with a sheen. I love mm -hmm. um, some of the, the cottons. So there's all kinds that I use. If you're new to free motion quilting, I always recommend a variegated because it covers and hides a multitude of sins. And so your motifs always look great. But so. um, mm -hmm. as far as paints go, most textile paints are acrylics. And so you, you get to, there's some form of acrylic that's water-based, however, um, in my mixed media, I do use the Shiva paint sticks on fabric, which oh. is an oil. It just takes a little longer to cure. Sure. Um, I also work with the ink tents, pens and, and blocks. Those are really fun. Those are basically ink dyes oh, that you nice. can add to your, your fabric. Uh, so there's a lot of ways to enhance your pieces. I think it just you have to look at what kind of um, results you are looking for. So you talked about glitter also. How do you mm -hmm. attach glitter to fabric? you have to make sure that you're using the correct kind of glitter. It's not the glass glitter, never the glass. That'll cut your fibers, but you want a polyester glitter. And there are um, certain glues. In fact, if you go to my blog, which is linked on my website, I do a whole um, blog post on using glitter to enhance things. And I, and I recommend that you look at the fabric and see if there isn't a motif that you can just embellish uh, oh, using the glitter. And then you always have to make sure that you cure it based on the manufacturer's directions. Um, some of them will tell you to let it air dry for 72 hours and then heat set with um, a protective layer. Others tell you to turn on your stove and then shut it off and then place the item in the stove that is oh. not turned on. So you have to you definitely follow the manufacturer's directions and then care and keeping. We always cover this about turning it inside out when you launder it and no heat drying it. Well, thanks, Linda. Um, I want to thank you for contributing to Mid-Missouri Art News Spotlight on the Arts, uh, making it a learning and informational experience for me, Kat, and our viewers. Uh, Kat, do you have any final words for uh, Linda? Well, I hope to be seeing one of your exhibitions soon because I'm thrilled to have you here in person and I'd really like to see your art. Well, thank you so yes. much for having me. It's been really fun talking about my work. And we'll have to invite her to the Jefferson City Art Club meeting to, to Absolutely. Share. Uh, she'll be right there with Jackie Berry, if you know Jackie Berry, uh, uh, Glenda Miller, who's a 
uh, both are well-known uh, uh, fabric artists uh, yeah. in the area. So we'll try to get send another invitation at this time to, for Jefferson Yard Club. We'll give you some time date and dates on that. Um, well, our next featured guest here on Spotlight on the Arts is a gentleman by the name of Jim Dyke. Now that might ring a bell with some of you that follow the Jefferson City News Tribune. Uh, most of you probably do look at the newspaper. The, that feature will be taped next week on September 6th to be aired soon thereafter. Um, at this time also, I want to let you know that, um, you know, we had uh, Odette Blanche out of Toronto, Canada via Springfield, Missouri on the anti-trafficking film that is in pre-production as we speak. As you may remember, uh, she was on the program, Spotlight on the Arts, in past months, but they took the Spotlight on the Arts and plus a proof of concept trailer and took it to the Cannes Festival and actually received a group of people interested and they came up with a seven figure uh, for the initial start funding of the project, What Did She Say? And uh, they have eight different uh, coalitions worldwide that are endorsing the project. They now are into the second phase of financing and they have crowd funding, which you can donate. All donations are t uh, tax deductible. If you'd like to go to an anti-trafficking movie film that'll go worldwide, Odette's movies go worldwide. She's known for her movies on certain projects you can go to www.pastlivesproductionsinc.net. Also on GoFundMe, there is a site, uh, GoFundMe also re will receive donations there. That's at www.gofundme.com forward slash film dash wa dash highly H-I-G-H-L-Y dash social dash conscience. This will be flashed on your screen here in a second. So that's the movie coming up. We're going to be filming in January and February. I'm playing the part of Grandpa Nuttle, which I'm honored to say that I'm going to be a part of. Other casting will be done in uh, the months of uh, December. Uh, throughout the United States, looking at different actors and actresses for the project. Top dollar. Also, while we're at it, I'd like to invite you to think about making a donation to JCTV here in Jefferson City. You know, they work with the Lincoln University and, um, and always are looking at a, a budget that they struggle with yearly, annually. So I would like you to think about uh, donating to JCTV. All donations are tax deductible there also. Well, I'll turn back to Kathleen now. Uh, Kathleen, uh, you had some. That's right. Uh, after we do Spotlight on the Arts with Jim Dyke from Cottonstone Gallery, mm -hmm. we'll be going back to Mid-Missouri Art News, sponsored by the Jefferson City Art Club. And we'll meet featured artists uh, on the website and at the DMV will be Sunny Hodge of Jefferson City. And uh, Sunny is uh, one of the ladies who helps prepare all the nice food at our uh, exhibition receptions at Capital Arts. Then in that same program, we'll visit the well-known color, watercolor artist, Richard Dutton of Hallsville, Missouri. And then that program will be taped on September 13th and it will be uh, published and airing on YouTube and on the Jeff City uh, TV uh, program sometime around the third week of September. Super, super. And I uh, might add that um, uh, Sunny Hodge is noted for her pet art uh, portraits, you say, pet portraits, I should say. And Mr. Dutton, Richard Dutton of Hallsville, will, at this moment, he is in Dubai and also in India doing plain air watercolor paintings that he will be making in part of our presentation uh, coming up, as Kat said. Well, thank you, JCTV producer Glory Enloe and our camera personnel and my co-host Kathleen Dake and 
definitely Linda Bratine. And thank you, our viewers, uh, for watching. Look for more Mid-Missouri Art News and Spotlight on the Arts on JCTV and YouTube. I'm Rick Jay saying, see you next time. Thank you.